Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 87 to 91, or unit 28 of the third section of the Green Book. So this is a, a question which has quite a complicated diagram that looks at how neurons can affect the um, swing and stance modes of a cockroach's leg, at the position of a cockroach's leg. So we're going to start off with question 87, um, which says of the following, the elements that are most directly triggered trigger a switch from swing to stance is our what? Okay, so if we're going from the swing phase into a stance phase, let's have a look at um, the flexion part on the right-hand side, looking at sensory receptors. We can see that in the flexion phase, um, you get excitation of these hair receptors. And these hair receptors uh, go on through motor neuron R and split into two different um, pathways, U and Q. Q goes on to inhibit the flexor burst generator, which goes on to inhibit further flexion, and um, U goes on to excite the extensors, which go on to change uh, this, the phase from the swing phase into the extension or stance phase. Um, so the hair receptors are the most responsible for this. We can rule out the other ones. Um, so let's let's go through them. So we've already said the answer is B. A, with the cuticle stress receptors. So the cuticle stress receptors are found at the bottom of the diagram and they're excited during the extension phase. And they go on to excite further extension and go on to inhibit any flexion from happening. So it's not going to be that um, because it's already in the stance phase. It's not going to be causing a switch from one to the other. If we look at C, then it says about the flexors, which go on to... Um, cause the flexion which go on to excite the hair receptors by the mode that I spoke about earlier. But it's not as direct, and this question does say the most direct trigger for a switch from swing to stance. So while it of course is playing a role, it's not as direct. The hair receptors are more direct. And again, for question D, or for option D, sorry, we're given the option of flexor burst generator which then goes on to excite the flexors, which then goes on to excite the hair receptors. So again, it's just a less direct way of doing this. So the element that most directly triggers the switch is going to be B, the hair receptors. If we look at 88, then it says, when the central command neurons are stimulating the flexor burst generator during the swing phase and impulses travel past point S, which is the following would be active. So, if we're looking at point S, which is on the right-hand side of the flexor burst generator, we can see this pathway splits into two. We've got the T pathway and the V pathway. So the T pathway goes on to excite the flexors and the V goes on to inhibit the extensors. Because T and V are the only two pathways that branch off from S, we can say T and V are the, are the most active in this case. So T and V only. So that would give us answer C. Looking at 89 then. Of the following situations, nerve impulses pass point S at the most frequent rate. Um, at what point? Okay, so this is question 89. And let's have a look at what the pathways going from S um, actually do. As I said, there's the T pathway that goes on to excite the flexors, which go on to encourage flexion. Conversely, there is going to be uh, the V pathway, which goes and prevents extension. So if this pathway is causing more flexion and inhibiting extension, you'd want this to happen in the middle of the flexion stage um, or in the middle of the swing phase. So that means the answer for this one is going to be D. Question 90 then. It says if the nerve pathway were cut through point W, um, extension would what? Okay. So at point W, um, this is something that excites extensors. And um, it is not the only thing um, that goes on to control extension. As you can see, there's pathways U, V, and X, which go on to control through excitation or inhibition um, the role of the extensors here. So it could still this extension phase, this stance phase, could still be initiated and could still be terminated because we have both excitatory and inhibitory um, pathways that lead to it. W isn't the only one there. Um, so the answer here is going to be C because it could still be initiated and it could still be terminated. 
91 says the load is removed from the leg at the end of the stance phase. Of the following, the most immediate increase in the rate at which impulses travel past a point occurs at which point? Okay, so for this one, we're going to have a look at each of them in turn. At um, point X, we can see that this goes on to um, control extension. It goes on to um, excite extension. And it says the load is removed from the leg at the end of the stance phase. Um, you wouldn't see an increase in the rate here because um, you're going to encourage extension here. And if a load is being removed from the leg, um, you're going to have uh, less um, less uh, excitation of the hair receptors, meaning that um, X couldn't be the right answer here because of this removal of the load. If you look at B, it then talks about Y, which goes on to inhibit the flexor burst generator. Um, this, of course, is important in making sure that flexion doesn't happen. But if a load is being removed, you'd expect flexion to uh, occur. So it's not going to be Y either. If we're looking at C, then it says the U um, pathway. So this goes on to encourage, again, extension, which isn't what we'd expect if a load was removed um, from, the, from the leg, which means that it's not going to be option C, which leaves us with option D. Um, which is pathway V, and this goes on to inhibit extension, which is something we would expect. We'd expect this pathway to be more active. If a load is taken away, it would encourage flexion. And to do that, we have to inhibit extension. So going through pathway V would be the best way of doing this. So we'd expect that um, there's going to be um, more impulses, an increase in the rate at which impulses travel past the point um, V. So the answer for 91 is going to be D. I understand that this um, the figure could be a little bit complicated, but taking it bit by bit, I think it, it it's not too bad if you if you try and break it down a little bit. So I hope that helped.